draw with Upshaw trying to get a, a lead on if three is going to be playing anywhere near forward 50. Frawley generally takes it the deepest of the opposition forwards. Great day for footy. MCG Sunday afternoon. Opening bounce. Segler up very high, knocks it down. Cochin goes after it. Miles outside of the build only as far as Gibson. Mitchell immediately in the action. Smith a bit of a fumble. Now it's Hill in space. Luke's one over the top and Hodge. Hodge goes down the line, tried to anyway. Smothered, ricochets out of bounds. It's what you want in your 300th, isn't it? Just a nice little handball to open the account. Straight into the action. It is a great day. A little overcast now. It was perfectly fine earlier this morning, but just the perfect day for football. Rioli did so well and gives it to Mitchell for his second touch. Inside the first 30 seconds of the game, a high ball down towards McAvoy, wrapped up now by Grimes and taken to the ground. First thing is smart, a smart footballer, Sam. He kicked that deliberately high in the air because McAvoy is the big tall player. So with the tall player, drop it on his head. Don't wait for him to move. Tossed up in the pocket then, Play McAvoy on. taps it down. Mitchell at his feet and passes out. Back. Mitchell gets a free kick. Could be a fairy tale start. Okay, okay. kick this left foot or right foot, do you think? I was thinking that was something because you, 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 you think he just picks on the side, doesn't he? Yeah. That's it there. Back on Marks here. Guys, whether he's a natural right and he learned to kick left or the other way around, to be honest. I think I've heard this story. I think it was left yeah. to kick right. He's going to kick left, is he? No. Right. Ambi Footstress. Here he comes. Oh, well, we talked him out of that. <laughs> Interesting with the bomb, Lou. I think the bomb could work its way into the AFL football. That high kick, and all the forwards flat forward. Yep. Amazing when you see a guy get the ball, say, on the wing and just kick it low trajectory to a defender. Often thought. I think there is an element of, uh, of what you're saying, Dennis, to allow your little players to get there for the contest, the very little contest. Edwards, Martin, there is that fend off. Heard about it before the game. Griffiths, quickly, but chopping it off and in the road is Brand. It wasn't a great kick. He lowered the eyes just a little too much, perhaps. Stratton. Now Gunston on the wing. He's got some space to move. Mitchell hasn't kicked a goal this season. Would have been his first goal of the year. Would have been absolutely perfect. O'Brien short to Gibson. Gibson tacking edge of the centre square. A long ball again. McAvoy to target. Puopolo at the back. Slow to release. Brewster's got it now. Trying to find an angle to get the kick away. McAvoy assisting. Brewster again. Hunt comes in hard. Retreating with a handball to Asprey. Well done, McAvoy. Good smother. Bruce might get another go at it here. Now he's tackled. And the umpire will throw it up. Great pressure from the Tigers. Straight out here. Hawthorne to the punt right end, doing all the attacking. McAvoy belatedly. Spurs wide of the pack. Destania did nicely. Ellis, Miles. Up towards the wing goes the kick. Griffiths got in front. Frawley coming off a good game against Sydney. And passes it back. Brad didn't know where the footy was. Stolen away by Mark. Little one to it. Cochin. That's interesting. Cyril wouldn't be fended. Virtual can't find a way through. Ball up. If he, if he could fend off Surioli, you know it's working because uh, Rioli just does not get dropped off the tackle. Hampson did well then. Good tackle, Rioli. Perfect, absolutely perfect tackle on Dustin Martin. Let him have it. Isn't that a win? Well, Dusty, the fend-off king, he couldn't get away. He didn't know he was behind him. Here's Gibson. Birchall on the wing broadcast side. Can set them up or go short. Mitchell getting a lot of the football in his milestone game early. Hill so good last week and burst on the end of it this time cleanly. They're good at a lot of things, Hawthorne, but it's that kick into the forward 50. I think they just do brilliant. They always seem to find the right option, go deep if there's nothing on, or actually just someone moving into the into the arc there. They always seem to find the right target. Thanks, Jack. They've got such a good spread of goal kickers. Bruce with 33 for the season. Gunston with 38. And this doesn't add to the Bruce tally, so it's been a little... Wasteful so far. The short kick in was a short kick, as it turns out, and had Ellis in a bit of trouble. Floston there to try and help out. 
Bruce ran into short. Off to Puopolo now. High ball back to the dangerous area. That's a good mark by White Cross. Back in the team. Hawthorne fans delighted to see him back. You caught it before, Lee. They're, they're really deliberate with the way they go forward, and it's a pretty simple formula for them. If there's someone free, well, they, they hit the lead and they honour the lead so well, but alternatively, they just kick it to the same spot every time. And when, when it's predictable, everyone knows where it's going, so your key forwards get there and mark it, or your small forwards get there and crumb it. Been out of the team for such a long time. First game back last week, and now his first goal since his return, and the Hawks are away. even that centering kick, it's basically he centered the ball slightly to the opposite forward pocket and so often the uh, a forward can float in to that spot because really his, his position on the opposite half forward flank just in to, to, to stop the change of direction. I think that was White Cross, White Cross's positioning when the ball floated. Nice mark, nice goal. Every team has different terminology for the way they read the game or apply it to their game plan. But you hear Clarkson and, and the Hawthorne players talk about it a lot. The point of most opportunity, and that's where that ball got centred to. Segler on the way down. Rig on his knees. Puopolo. High ball to high ball with him. He had, he had to drop his knees by about three inches and all of a sudden the tackle was high. That's one <laughs> advantage you got when you're short. That's right, you're on your knees. Not to get some advantage. Puopolo across the ground. Here's Brand. On the wing, down towards half forward, Segler, Come wonderfully on, improved there. player. Is it right half forward? No, closer there. Stay behind. Plenty of movement on the forward line. Not Yours. much towards him though. Just sets it up. Rebound. Outmarked. McAvoy. Should never have happened. He just does that. Not often. Two, three times a game, maybe McAvoy, like the big ruckman-sized player, but can take. The occasional big pack mark deep forward. He's threatened three times already in this first term, Lee. He's such a good target. If he doesn't mark it, they're not, no one's going to mark it against him because he forces himself to the football. He doesn't allow the opposition to just subtly shepherd him out. McAvoy then. Kick is on the way. And he's missed. They would start by the Hawks. They missed a couple. They lead by nine. You can see the Hawks early trying to expose the lack of height in Richmond defence. Segler pushed forward hard out of that free kick from the forward 50 and then down in McAvoy. So short with the kicking in duties. He's gone to a two on one. The ball fisted back towards Stratton. Now O'Rourke over the foot. He had it a couple of times and Martin just pushed him off the ball and willed it the other way. Cochin got away from Gibson. That was well done. Here's Martin. Time when other players haven't. It's like time stood still. Conker back in the side. Shorts followed up a long way. His kick went sideways. Ellis gets there first. He's got to negotiate Smith. He did it okay. Did it very well to Lloyd. Three goals last week for Lloyd. Got a beauty in the opening term. A dribbler. At a very acute angle. This is Greg. He's looking down towards half forward. Decides to come very short. Conker, yeah, thanks, good to see him back. Play on now, play on. Missed a lot of footy. On the logo. High ball inside the forward 50. Oh, well done by Revolt. Then Griffiths dropped the mark. Mitchell taken by Gibson to the opposite pocket. Gunston, as he often does, gets deep in defence now. A little bit of mixed game about Gunston. Very good player. Kicks it out wide. White cross reaches over the top and knocks it out of bounds. Since when Richmond had the ball in the centre of the ground, they hand passed, hand passed, trying to set something perfect up because they had built no confidence in their forwards. Sometimes I reckon when you're in the front half of the centre square, you just got to get it in there because once they got in there, that second option, Hawthorne had the defence back and set. Sam Mitchell, five disposals. This is number six for Dustin Martin to be the leader out on the ground. Hunt just got his handball away. Grigg was pushed off the footy. McAvoy a little slow. Ball still alive, just on the wing near the logo and poor below. It was not a good enough attempt, according to the umpire. I think he dived on the ball. That, and that, in that one, if you don't get it out, well, you're going to be done as he was. 
So Hampson had the runner just wheeling around the ball long down in the Edwards direction from the short kick. The long short kick that time and the ball over the line. So the Tigers yet to score. Richmond 1-3 early going. Sunday footy at the MCG. Tossed in. McAvoy forced in front. Put a hand to it. Lloyd missed it. They meet at the footy awkwardly. Miles, well done, but can't keep it in. Went looking for short. Ball out of bounds again. Thanks, Van. Those figures telling us what we can see. Reinforcing it. Hawthorne, most of the attacking. Should have a bigger lead, really. Standing beside the pack, Grigg is tackled immediately by Burgoyne. Ball up. You speak about the the evolve, evolution of the game suiting certain players and all 36 Hi players within 50 metres of this stoppage. It's no wonder Sam Mitchell's still playing such good footy. He operates better than anyone in confined spaces. That's a good point, Nick. It's very, very confined and holding the ball again. So, Puopolo has been done twice. That's it. Thanks, Paul. That's the angle. That would be the pro opportunity one. Just did, had, it was really only half a step that he had, but he didn't dispose of it, the umpire. Fairly harsh, but probably correct. So Grigg with a free kick. He looks like he's going to set up for a shot here. He runs around, got a bit of momentum. Revolt's got to run at it. Well done, McAvoy, just knocking the ball across the line. That was a decisive spoil. And that's their first score of the afternoon. Mitchell in the pocket. Lewis, tight situation, hooks it. Duopolo, fingertips to it. Important, though. Hodge misses a target out of the head of Smith. Duopolo, forcing it forward. This is Sicily over the footy now. Runner outside him. Burgoyne goes short to Whitecross. Across the ground, spreading it. Crawley pushes up, goes to the pocket, he'll direct it, bounces in front of Gunston, then goes away from him and across the line. But they moved it quickly. Poopolo didn't get a position in that chain of play, but two important touches of the ball, just getting a fingernail in, forcing the ball forward, that's the value we provide to the team. And Jack Gunston, a couple of disposals. Hampson, O'Rourke, Lewis, Gunston just had it knocked away in the end. Now Cochin's ball from Floston. Tough one for McBean. Gibson coming at him the other way. Hit the body hard. Jure, Brand, Gibson. The ball across the ground. It was a dangerous one. It just sat up in the breeze a little bit. Didn't get to Hill. And Martin now can send them forward as a result. And Edwards on the end of it. Plays on quickly to the pocket. It's a clever short kick. And the mark taken by Nathan Drummond. Great to see him back in the side playing just his second game. Did his knee on debut against Melbourne in round four last year and spent 15 months on the sidelines recovering and recuperating. Just great to see him back at this level. Rare turnover by Hawthorne. Gibson was the one who gave it back and uh, it was just a race back into the forward 50. <laughs> the offensive players seem to always get there first. Well, this would be a special moment for the Tigers too. Nathan Drummond has never kicked a goal in his senior career. Only a game in a quarter old but are behind only that time. So they've been better in the last few minutes or so. Hawthorne, seven points as Hill goes down and takes a clever slip catch. That's pretty good. Right on the 50, Hill to Hodge. He settles at left half back. Seven points the margin, midway through the term. Under partly cloudy skies at the MCG, just perfect for footy. Hodge unloads long down a wall. Top forward Sicily from behind. Couldn't take the mark. Then in front, Miles. He got it from Markov. A good mark. A clever one is taken by Griffiths. Griffiths, 75 metres from goal. In fact, it's McBean, sorry. Down towards the pocket. No hand. Ball goes out of bounds. He'll be throwing it. Pull of the jumper on, uh, on Lloyd. That's the one thing. It's umpire's easy to see if they see a bit of jumper come away from the body like that. Easy call. Play on. Lloyd runs around, snaps, and misses to the near side. We saw the long kick down the line there from Hodge. That's a win for the Tigers. That's what they want to make 
the Hawks do. Kick it long down the boundary. They're so good at the little chip kick, the uncontested possessions out of their back line. They need to keep forcing them to kick long. Good setup from the Tigers. Burgoyne oh, yeah. held the ball a long time. Mark not paid, so it didn't matter in the end. The skipper just thumps the ball off the ground. O'Brien did brilliantly. That was really good football. Got away from Markov too easily. And Hill, who took a clever mark a moment ago, was playing for 50 there. He went too short and Conker read it well. Now Conker needs to stand up. He does. Clearing kick from Asprey. Long towards the wing. Revolt flew from the side. Rance a long way from his defensive area. Gave it to Martin. Had a lot of time there, found some time. A three-on-one situation here, and Gibson not quite taking the mark. Frawley in support. I thought he threw it. No free kick. A bit unlucky, the Tigers, perhaps. Revolt in hard. Good contest. McBean did what he had to do. He was outnumbered in the air. Three to one, but he forced himself to the foot. He brought the ball to the ground. I mean, that's really always has to be the plan B for a big forward. They're going back to Mitchell. Tigers now working hard. Lewis in front. That's a free kick. Up towards left half back. Looking across the ground for options. Nothing there. Drags it back towards the centre square. That's a clever kick, though. Realigns them. Here's Rioli, long kick out, O'Brien, hands to it, doesn't get a free kick, goes after it again, outnumbered, picked up by Short, wheels around, shows too much of it to Mitchell. Mitchell looking across the ground now, will he get the trip? Thought about going long, now he hesitates, brilliant. White cross in traffic, Birchall on the burst, long kick, getting back is Gunston, oh, gee. I'll tell you what, he just missed that post and didn't look at it. It was the post and the fence, wasn't it? Dan Markov gets the quick kick in. Oh! Now Ellis, he was going at that football. Good on. 100 miles an hour. He just avoided the post, as you said, and his momentum slow to stop. McBean almost, Brand behind. Got some important contact on that. Gibson now. Hill, it's been lively early. He was terrific last week against the Sydney Swans. Back to Gibson, and Gibson retreating and finds Jurey. Isaac Smith inside defensive 50. So Puopolo's on wide if he wants him. Comes out that way. Puopolo wants to go back to the middle of the ground. Smith shepherding out. Richmond in the marking contest. Shepherding out. And free kick does go the Tigers' way. So against Burgoyne. Now Hunt outside 50. Lowers the eyes. Gives it to Jack Revolt. That was perfect. Interesting situation. Stratton actually had very well, but because he had no body contact, as defenders tend this one here, there's no such thing as looking around for self preservation for the modern footballer. That's the free kick, but Stratton had very well, but he sort of had it was a, a, no body contact. He had a couple of metres, and then very well could just decide do I go back, forward, sideways. Stratton had no chance of staying with him. Free was against Burgoyne to Hunt and shepherding out was there 37 goals for the season and well Richmond this inaccuracies may prove pretty costly because they've done well to fight back into the game they've had a lot of the football in the last 10 minutes or so but haven't been able to convert well fortunately Hawthorne missed uh, three of sitters early in the quarter so in that regard both sides have been pretty inaccurate early haven't they Virgil kicking it in Edwards busy over the top miles step into the footy too pulls it back to a dangerous spot Knocked down by Frawley, straight to Drummond. Now he's got his first. Most players know about adversity. And they respect him for it. Fantastic. Clearly a lot of emotion shown by the Richmond teammates there. Well, when a player has a significant injury like that, and we see Mitch Wallace is about to go through it, your teammates are the ones that see everything that you go through every day, all the trials, the 
the, the sweat that goes into your recovery. So it's no surprise that they got around him so much when he kicked that goal. Martin with the ball forward. So scores a level now. McBean outnumbered and Brand at the Hold back in. takes a pretty easy mark. Do you know, Nick, do you, do you know when a player hasn't kicked a goal? The players always seem to know. Yeah, well, they'd be well aware of the fact that he's had a, a big struggle to get back from injury and, and only being his second game, the boys would know that. He hasn't kicked a goal, and, and what a significant achievement that would be. Not only getting back out on the ground, but kicking his first goal in senior AFL footy. Lewis's long ball down the line, thumped over. There was a bit of remonstrating, and now some push and shove. Segler behind Hampson. Segler did well to get his kick away, but only as far as Miles, who sends the ball down towards half forward. Frawley was in best position. McBean did well to give a contact. Now Jeray caught in a very good tackle by Lloyd. Not penalised, didn't matter. Conker gathers the ball back towards a dangerous Castagna who couldn't mark. Now Drummond pushed over this time, forcing his way through the defender, Smith. Miles, they can load up again. Hunt, Edwards, high ball. Only one man back. It's Frawley. It cleared the line. And a behind again for the Tigers. A good 10 minutes. Richmond Hawthorne had the uh, domination early. I think it was about eight minutes before Richmond went forward. But now they're pretty much controlling the flow of the game and Hold the them possession. Up. That's it. Mitchell. Stay on the side. Go wide. One from Virgil. Stay behind. Play on. You. Very impressive by the Tigers. Very impressive kick from Mitchell. Smith. Now he turns around the defence. It didn't run on there for Puopolo. Well done by Marcox. Slipped the hand pass away. Cotchin on the defensive 50. Hampson drops the mark under pressure. Bruce missed it. So did Conker. Bruce goes back to Lewis. Lewis towards the middle to a contest. Well, no contest. A terrific mark is taken there by Drummond. He plays on immediately. The double figures now, Martin his 10th disposal Dan McBean he's really giving a contest contest on half forward and Ellis's wide ball marks by Rioli so Daniel Rioli for the Tigers he's too far out to score about 65 from home so just lays it up maybe didn't bring it back inside the field enough I don't think and in the end pretty easy too easy for Ben Stratton he was playing for that one Hawthorne had the defenders back so I suspect he was almost going to kick it wide and if uh, Rewald didn't mark it at least they have a stoppage in the forward pocket to start again Not where he wanted it now a whistle he's getting hot chopped the ball on uh, so I pushed him in the back so I pushed something straight out mate so he weren't looking at the footy and you push oh him straight to the ground. Thanks, Lee. Time back on. Just here. So Hodgie not happy with the call, but the Frank Hodgson has the free kick. You can see the push. I mean, really, I don't think any umpire is going to see that and play that. So they're up by a point. They're now up by seven points. Big whistle, that one. Skipper on skipper. Tides clear out. There was a bit of holding on, wasn't there? There was holding on around the contest it was holding on from the Ruckman and it's been that sort of game so far the umpire prepared to blow the whistle and just clear things out and the beneficiaries that time were the Tigers so as Lee said they have had a good last 10 or 12 minutes and they deserve this lead seven points we'll have a look at this again about the center of the screen and Hodge just turned and gave him uh, Koch a shove I mean he made sure he actually made the most of it and fell over, but I think I think that'd be a pretty obvious free kick. Mitchell digs it out of the middle, kicks it down towards half forward. Asprey goes back, just hold on. So Mitchell up to ten possessions. Now it comes unglued for the Tigers and Bruce punishes them, dribbling it through. bad turnover they've actually building their confidence the last 10 minutes Richmond they've started to play well they've got their couple of goals and then Nasbury kick his straight into his stomach he's probably slightly winded by his roof but he had enough breath to uh, to dribble the goal through Well, time will tell, but that, that's got the potential to be a real momentum killer, that one. So a goal out of nothing for Bruce, but he worked so hard to establish a lead. 
to give it back so easily like that. Nowhere to hide for David Asprey, unfortunately, for that one. And now Bruce was winded, wasn't he? He took the footy cleanly enough, kicked the goal, but then was sucking them in for a while afterwards. It's amazing when the goals are around, though. The, win the winning doesn't kick in until after you've kicked it. There was no pain until the ball crossed the line, was there? Concart, but we've got another whistle off the ball. Lewis, Lewis Hawthorne. This time it's going the Hawks way. Jordan Lewis being hung on to by Grigg, I think it was. Gunston just spreading quickly on half forward. A Sicily darting around for him. He goes longer than that. Back in the McAvoy direction. It cleared them all. And Puopolo taken high. Well, the law of physics and gravity says there's not a lot else that could have happened in this situation. Rance, the taller man, Puopolo, the little man, got him. I mean, Rance just has to obviously bend his knees further, so he goes in really low, but the height's the very reason Puopolo gets out reach a lot of height free kicks. Probably another of those players in the 20 to 30 goal range for the season. That dangerous spread from right on the boundary line. Near side miss. I think Ben Griffiths would like his time over again. He flew uncontested and missed the footy. He's short. He's showing a lot of confidence in this young man. Been doing this for a few weeks now, bringing the ball in. Obviously a very good kick. Segler from behind thumps it down. He's that man again. Martin, the short one. Cochin, back end of the square, runs aggressively, hesitates, pops it out wide. Birchall over the top, almost the mark there, Drummond. Pretty good opening turn. Feeds it back. Grimes jabs it forward. Birchall just over a minute remaining in the turn. Hawks controlling the football. Now it's with Frawley. Frawley's on the wing. Chance for either club to score. I think aware of the time. Hawthorne just taking a little sting out of this and maybe will come with a thrust as he kicks it down towards half forward. Segler's in front, couldn't take the mark, bounced on his head, found it, knew where the voice was. Unfortunately, Rioli picked it off. Conker gave it to Edwards, now it's with Martin. Martin kicks it long inside the forward 50. Gibson needs to mark it. Well, it bounced OK for him. Revolts the meat and the sandwich now. Stratton takes a while. Well done, Jack. Well, uh, the effect of the kick to the advantage of Hawthorne. Then Segler, right place, right time, and Mark. So 19 seconds left on the clock. Scores a level and feels about right, actually. Good start from Hawthorne. Good reply from the Tigers. And it wouldn't be out of order for the scores to be level on the siren. Although, what a great mark that is from Gunston. They're never dead, are they, Hawthorne? Never dead. Tigers, I reckon, were thinking what I was thinking, that the siren was coming. But not them. That's the reason Nick here thought he might be the most valuable player we were talking about in the pre-game because he's got the ability to win those marking contests. He's got the height advantage, but his judgment is always so good. And he's finishing too without putting it on him, Basil. I'd back him from here. Just about, wouldn't you? A step inside the 50. And in the end, just a little short. So scores are level at quarter time. It's been really entertaining. Sam Mitchell, his 300th game, getting plenty of it in his milestone match. 11 disposals for the champ. Dusty Martin with 12. 2 5 apiece. Scores level at half time at the MCG. Game Welshy. Yeah, it is. Tigers just got to be a little bit more controlled when they're getting out of defence through the midfield. Just control it so they're not bombing it long forward. Gibson, Stratton, these type of guys are too good at zoning off. We saw Poppy ran off there in a quarter time break. It's gone straight down the race. No problems with Luke Bruce, though. Sunday footy at the MCG. Opening bounce of the second turn. Miles to Martin, who kicks it down towards half forward, sliding in. Mark is taken by Drummond. He's been pretty good so far. Has a goal to his name. Kicks inside the forward 50. Some blocking down there. Third man in the chain. Takes the mark. It's Griffiths. He's showing glimpses. Uh, Griffiths hasn't done it often enough yet, but it's interesting. Ty Pickery was uh, been left out of the side the last few weeks to give McBean a chance to be playing that big role with Rewald and Griffiths. So uh, he's usually a good kick. He's a promising player. And he score, and the Tigers lead. This one out to the right. Well, that's unforgivable. No one back. McAvoy plays on immediately. Smith 
Runs the pocket, kicks it out wide. Sicily, who's been quiet, couldn't take the mark. Picked up by Hunt. Miles feeds it back. This is short, close to the boundary line. Asprey under pressure. Squeezes one on the bounce to Martin. Martin just forward of the wing. Pumps it back deep into attack. Griffiths with the run. It's going to be a free kick, I think, to the Hawks. With the umpire. McAvoy's got it. Having a good game so far, Big Ben. And short to Birchall. Very close to his defensive goals. Virtual. Twice runner up in the best and fairest. Sends it to the outer side. McAvoy. Getting a lot of the football. Influential. So is this man, Mitchell. Just holds it for a moment. He thought about coming really wide. Then with the left boot, does that after a change of mind. That was brilliant. Bruce sends the ball down the line. Gunston on the end of it again. So damaging. He turns around quickly. White cross retreating back to the pocket. Short did well. Got there. Affected the mark. And then Grimes just dancing around with not much room. Hodge the beneficiary. White crosses handball. Didn't hit a target. Ellis back to Castagna. Dangerous there. Now Hodge gets it from Hill. Gets it onto the boot. Under pressure when he kicked. Couple of them colliding. Asprey and Short have made a mess of this. Still alive as a result. Isaac Smith made a mess of the shot on goal. Probably had a little more time. And now it's Hawthorne in front by a point. Well, a lot of eagerness there. You admire that. Just Two players went at the footy. Neither of them actually touched the footy. They actually knocked into each other. Out around the other side then. Clever. Burgoyne. Good use of the body. Goes wide at the mark. Call the play on. Here's Mitchell again. Bobbing up. That's a brilliant kick. Absolutely brilliant. Gunston's got it in the pocket. Good enough vision to see him, let alone execute the kick across the body. But the kicking is the easy part, I guess. It's finding the, the target in that massive bodies in the forward 50. Well, he's hit Gunston twice in the last three minutes. Once with a searing left footer and that one just a, a right foot stab. Missed both sides now. You still shake your head sitting up here in the stands. His, his ability to go either side. It just, as a forward up the ground, it provides you with so many more options. You can go either side of the ground with your lead based on what the defender's doing. Knowing that Mitchell can roll either side of his body, it's just such a great weapon to have as a midfielder. And Nick, you think Gunston is Hawthorne's most important player at the moment? Based on the way Mitchell's playing, I might have to amend that statement. But yeah, look, I think he's a the player they can at least afford to lose if they want him in the flag. Hodge, Rance, a couple of tough customers, and the ball will come up again. And McAvoy, I'm sure his development won't surprise you. He's playing really well. Yeah, well, what a move it's been for him since he went across to Hawthorne, two flags. But no, he's really important. The, the ability to go forward for a ruckman and take a contested mark and kick goals, which is what he's able to do once or twice a game, is really, really valuable in, in the modern game. He's a strong man and such a tall man, obviously. 200 centimetres over, 100 kilos. Third man up. Greg might have knocked it out of his range there. Miles Hunt in trouble. Luckily, Martin was there. Held the ball in one hand. Greg following up from the back pocket. Floston, a kick, though. Not particularly good. And Birchall in the road. Takes the mark on the wing. Just on McAvoy as well. Top three aerobically at St Kilda in, in his time there at the club. So he's a super athlete. Great runner over long distance. That's impressive. Gibson. Left half back. Pinpoints it. Stratton wants to go immediately. Out wide. Needs to be precise. Rance was bearing down. Had a free kick, I think, to O'Brien there. Not sure he paid the mark. Still got the footy regardless. Looks back towards the corridor. Stratton. They come across the ground. Frawley. In fact, a couple to share here. Frawley does exactly that. Gives it to Brand, who takes off now. Runs to the wing. Looks down towards half forward. Hasn't got the carry from behind. Hodge couldn't take the mark, but the two veterans combine. Lewis to Hodge. Hooks it down towards full forward. Lurking behind O'Brien. Should have stayed there. Ball runs free now. Bruce, danger. Bruce loves this situation. Gets free. Head passes to Gunston. He's claimed by Hampson. Bruce has grabbed as he got the football. And misses just kicking it straight ahead of him when he needed some angle on it. So clever there for Bruce. Just a little knock rather than take clean possession the first time. Bought himself some time. That was quite brilliant. He deserved a goal. A short, long kick. And Thanks, 
with a strong mark in front of Brand. Hawks are going to have to start putting some time into Mark. He's already had three touches. He's caught a 15 for the game, four inside 50s. Piopolo's come back out of the race. Spent a little bit more time with the doctors, but looks to be OK, which is good news for the Hawks. The big guys combined. Griffiths, Hampson. And now Drummond. Just his second game. So just joined us, kicked his first goal in the first term. Here's Rance. What do they do with someone like Martin Lee, the Hawks? It's, it's tended to be shields in the past when they've yeah. gone with a run with. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like, in some ways, Mitchell versus Martin. Neither side's playing a particular one-on-one -on -one around the middle of the ground that I can see. So, I mean, at the moment, the Hawthorne are still doing well enough in the game. You're thinking that they have to, I would have thought, just devote someone to running with him and doing nothing else. And if they're going head-to-head, -head, Mitchell and Martin, you would say that Mitchell yeah. has been far more effective with his disposal so far. They've been patient here, the Tigers. They've been forced to be patient by Hawthorne. Now they might be through. Floston, long ball down towards the pocket. Koch and Flew, Brand, oh, Reddit Best, so taller man in the contest. That's all right, and had no troubles with that one. 16 disposals for Martin. Dustin Martin coming off 43 disposals last week. The call on really, whether you really shut down a play getting a lot of the ball is really what's going on on the scoreboard. And Hawthorne are in front, so it's not as if... They're being troubled a great deal by uh, by Martin having a lot of ball in hand at this stage. Dunstan and Birchall. Short one. Smith thought about it. Didn't give to Hill. Now he might. There's Hill. Thought of the wing. Thinks about giving it back. And passes forward. Jurey in space. Hooks it back across his body. Segler. <laughs> Segler. Not very scientific behind the pack. He tried to subtly block, but it was far, far too aggressive. <laughs> His short runs himself into trouble. The kick coming out is pretty good. Finds McBee on the, mark, Sean. On the numbers. Right Left in, half right back. In. Entertaining game. Into win stuff. Not many goals, but Richmond giving a good account of themselves. Hawks by three points, Dan, and that's fumbled over the line, I think. We saw the game last night, uh, Nick, that you played in Bulldogs and St was really intense. High pressure, high tackling. This isn't one of those games. This is one of those games where players are playing keepings off with each other. 13 tackles to 13 halfway through the second quarter is a, a very low tackling game. Martin got away from Bruce Jass. Ellis gets another opportunity close to the line, but not that time. So 17 disposals he's up to now. Only three Tigers have had more touches in a game than the 43 he had last week. Kevin Bartlett, Joel Bowden and Rob Wiley once had the Richmond record of 46. Here's Gibson on half back. Jeray running up. So every player in Hawthorne's half of the ground. Birchall with nothing obvious to go to. So again, just a high ball in best position. Hampson couldn't mark. Now Gunston. And it'll come up again. Can they manufacture a goal here? The Hawks in tight. Hampson did well. Grigg hurriedly out of there. Only as far as Mitchell. Kept his composure. Goes to Hill. Feeds it off now. Birchall, natural left footer. Upended as he kicked. Affected the kick. Rance takes the mark. And immediately plays on. That's Daring. Asprey out of the back pocket. High one. Going back. White cross. Good to see him back. Too. That's a good guy. 55 metres out. So Hawthorne will put it back in. Running to the goal square is Sicily. He'll go in that direction. Sicily kept out of the climbing. Off hands taken there by Greg. He played it cleverly, Greg. Just gave his man a nudge. And that was enough. And now the ball's out of bounds. It's usually play a white glove. Obviously been injured a lot. I heard a Hawthorne official say once that if he wasn't a footballer, he'd be Prime Minister. That's how much they regard him, how highly they regard him as a person. I'm not sure which is easier, Lee. Well, they're not sure about the ease of the job, <laughs> but just the quality of the character. Segler's ball. Good mark, Hunt. Mark. Gee, that was some courage there. Going back with the flight of the ball. Didn't know what was coming the other way. And yet another disposal for Martin. Out wide to Asprey. Oh. On half back. It's a good kick. Down towards Drummond. Well read by Stratton. Came hard at it and got around Grimes. Knocked the ball forward. So they might be through here. O'Brien on the end of it. That was cleverly done. Got the knock on from Birchall. Still moving forward Hill. Got it from Burgoyne. Runs to 50. Inside 50 when he kicks. Puopolo. All the height in Richmond's favour. And in the end, really no player got a touch on the ball. It bounced in the square and threw for a behind. So Hawthorne 
by four points and neither coach seems particularly satisfied at the moment. Two goals apiece at the moment. Uh, clearly getting goals on the scoreboard is just not happening to this part of the game. Segler. Dexterity does nicely. Gibson. Mitchell. No hey, Hold there. Caught into right the square. Just sets it down towards the kickoff line. Sicily's in front. Really touched the footy so far this afternoon. In fact, just the one possession today. As this seems to be the way he gets the ball. He doesn't get a lot of the ball unless he marks it. But if he gets a little bit of a loop at it, times it well, got good, good elevation. But at this point of, the, of his career, he tends to be this. He either marks the ball or he doesn't find it. And he comes. Kick is on the way. And it's good. Hawks get their third. They're up by ten points then. I think that tends to be the way for most young key forwards. If they're not marking it, they generally tend to have an impact on the game. So around the club, if, if you're a senior player or a coach, that's, that's, that's where your responsibility comes in to really try to teach them some other tricks, a few more strings to their bow so they can make sure they're impacting the game when they're not always marking it. Good mark at uh, Gunston just in the last minute realised the teammate was in the better position so didn't go and spoil him. They're certainly having the forward possession now, Hawthorne. Or they're, uh, they're dominating field Watch position. Look at all of those there, inside Thank 50s you. down the right of screen. A, a big bunch of them. Lewis taken high. Birchall continues to be the distributor, feeds it in, Rance has got his name on this one. Really just ran at it and uncontested. Pretty easy mark for him. Now the kick out towards Revolt. With him, Stratton, Revolt, that was very clever. Through mid-air and a terrific mark taken by McBean who read it well. And now 50. He came from behind the mark to in front of the mark. That was an interesting call. Let me say it came from behind the mark. That is obviously the defensive side. I wasn't sure if he came up to the mark. From I might have a look at that in a. Yeah, well, he was in the marking contest. Yeah, yeah, it was an unusual, unusual call. So Liam McBean, just his third game for the season. He's kicked a goal this year, just to get the margin back to four points. Got the distance. It was a nice kick lengthwise, but maybe just straining for accuracy. He's he. Look there. Oh no, he's come back oh. on the defensive side. I know it's a real, that's a really strict, you know. I think you're allowed, technical you're allowed interpretation to do that. that one. Oh, well, you dare not touch them. There's Frawley. High one. Oh, mismatch there, Markov. Sitting dark. McAvoy gives it to Hodge, who kicks a tumbler inside the forward 50. Gloucester and O'Brien. O'Brien running out of space. And the ball goes across the boundary line. O'Brien wearing a famous number at Hawthorne, number 23. Bon Scott, Dermot, Buddy, John Peck. He won the Coleman three times back in the 60s. Not expected. With O'Brien, that is a weight on your back. Charging through, well played there by... The defender Castagna close to the boundary line. Cochin feeds it back. Revolt kept it alive. Hand pass from McBean though went straight to Birchall. Goes down the line. Now a chance for the Hawks. Chain of hand passes. Buopolo gave it to Hill. Centering ball. Off hands in front. Rioli haven't called his name too often. McAvoy tried to knock it on. Segler gave a hand pass to O'Rourke. And O'Rourke has pulled it back too much. Well, the coach would have his heart in his mouth with Segler and was it McAvoy sort of doing the drumming and hand passing at close quarters. They're just so dangerous in the turnover, the Hawks. That's the 24 points out of their 28 have been results of Richmond's turnovers. So that's Foston's view. Long ball, oh. McBean again has been a bit of a target. Brand oh. got it backwards from Stratton, sends it back inside 50 and Foston. Oh. Tracked it back. Bruce has been very dangerous on the forward line. Hasn't touched it a whole lot, but he's done some very clever and 
challenging things. Gunston, ditto. And Hill's good form continues. Dangerous ball popped up in O'Brien's direction and then nearly fell to McAvoy. They're not out of it yet. Puopolo. Now O'Brien taken to ground. And they'll start it off again. They've been the siege really the last five or ten minutes, Richmond, but Hawthorne's inaccuracy is just keeping them close. Lewis, third man up. Trying to get his own ball. Castagna's in there. There goes the kick from Gunston wide at the mark. It goes out of bounds. Just that final finishing kick. That was another example. Gunston's up so often would have snapped that, but the final finishing kick for Hawthorne uh, just not happening today. Asprey with the football. Margin 10 points. Drives it outside the defensive 50. From behind you, Ray got a fist on it. Fell in front. Miles quick hands. To the outside of the boot, Castagna down towards half forward. It was touched, so Griffiths took the ball cleanly. Hooks it down towards half forward. Bounces inside the 50. Rioli tracks it. Stratton came in the opposite direction. McAvoy having a good match, but beaten that time. Hand pass from McBean. Across it comes to Rioli, and Rioli goes in and kicks the goal. Slick work. A little bit of the um, rope a dope. The ball stuck in Hawthorne's forward line for the last five minutes, and then when they finally got it out, they had the space for it clearly. But the question was, could they? They were going to be outnumbered forward of the ball, but the errant handball by McAvoy was the the, uh, the turnover that created the opportunity. Like they were going to rebound, but just this handball from McAvoy went to ground. Then Richmond worked their way through. They were actually set up really well behind the ball, Hawthorne. Stratton came across and intercepted, but just goes to show the value of sticking the tackle. Rioli sticks the first tackle, applies the pressure. He ends up getting on the end of it and getting them a badly needed goal for Richmond. Hawthorne 1-5, Richmond 1-1 one, one in this term. Inside 50, 14-5 in favour of the Hawks. So that was a very important goal for the Tigers against the run of play. His short, got it from Hunt. This kick important. Brand had his name on it, waited for the bounce, and then tackled well by McBean. That was clever. Edwards knocked it back inside to where the congestion was, and maybe there was an opportunity to knock it the other way. The tied up on the wing. Hawthorne by four points. Just over six minutes remaining. Second term at the MCG. McAvoy's in front with a run, Hampson. Bruce to close quarters. Hill trying to get it to Mitchell. Mitchell found it anyway. Back to Bruce. Coughed it up. Martin across the body. Inside the forward 50. Revolt came up. Didn't really go at the footy. Nobody did. Fell at their feet. Trying to get out poorly. Hand passes to a dangerous spot. Everything opened up for the Tigers. In goes Burgoyne. Trying to get out of there is Jack, who was instrumental with a hand pass just a few moments ago, setting up Rioli. Rioli talking about Cyril. Cyril's been quiet, just four possessions. Daniel got the goal after some strong work. Great tackle, great follow-up. Here's Edwards bouncing one towards goal. Didn't go the right way for him. You would have expected a bit more left to right as that ball pitched. It went the other way. It was his wrong and and the margin is three points. It just seems all the half chances today are, are ending up being points. Both yeah. teams have had a yeah. half a dozen to, to ten half chances that they just haven't been able to convert. 23 inside 50 is Hawthorne for three goals. Uh, they're usually more like 12 from 23. Yeah. Cool. How easy was that? Too easy. And Jordan Lewis. 11th disposal now, just chips it short to Sicily. Play on. So Mitchell, 16 disposals, now up to 17. He slowed down a little bit. Play Lewis, on. Gibson, Conker trying to get around him. Well done by Conker, just herded him up. Still a good kick, though, to Smith. Now Jaray running hard. Here's Burgoyne, attacking edge of the square. Kept it low and flat, but well read by Rance, who plays on quickly. Maybe a little dangerous. He didn't waste any time, Rance. Markov's kick to a challenging area, and Grigg gets there, providing support. Ellis in that marking contest, and that is not a bad result, given how dangerous the ball from Markov coming out was. Interesting player, Markov. Very leggy. Colt. Play on. 
and run. Very athletic. Likely tied. White crossed it brilliantly. Bruce gave it to Lewis. Open goal. Beckham still a live footy. Griffiths chested it down. Then slipped over and gave it to Gunston. There's a gift from the top of the square. Wonderful stuff by Jack on the spot there. Just his work weight as much as anything else. And now he's getting a little inflammatory. Grimes headbutting with Rioli. Rioli, a broad smile. And so far this afternoon, a little magic from him. He's a man for the occasion, we know that. Yeah, Griffiths, he was out, but he slipped. <laughs> Amazing how Gunson just seems to be in the right spot at the right time. Just to kick an easy goal from a bad turnover. Really, the Asprey mistake and the Griffiths mistake is the difference in the game at the moment. Absolutely. They've gifted them two goals. And Hawthorne, their lead is only nine points. So, Richmond, I'll be disappointed by that. Martin couldn't get away that time from O'Rourke. So, the fend-off, not always able to break the tackle. He had two tackling in that time, and that's a good mark. Well done. Rance now gets the handball forward from Rioli. Running hard is short. No one there. Brand tracking it back. Gibson calling him in and Brand. That's pretty easy time. mark in the end. Goes across the face of goal. Low but Frawley able to mark it. Took the heat out of it. Here's Birchall driving to the outer side wing. Rioli touches it across the line. It's had one of those days. Sewer where he's laid a couple of tackles but largely he's Hasn't been able to find his way into the game at this point. Just under four minutes till half time. Nine points the difference. Tossed in. Hampson, a regular now, knocks it down. Segler, soccer's off the deck. Cotchen finds a way out. Quick hands. Grigg, hurried kick down towards half forward. Frawley with the run. Didn't get very high. Hodge played it well. Lewis, Gibson, famous names there. Add this one to the list. His big day. Mitchell has back to Hodge, but not the first time. High ball towards the wing. Rioli. This time his run. Comes behind the pack and short. Rioli puts a hand in. Wins a hard football. Well played. Sicily under pressure. Kicks it down towards the pocket. Wayward kick and it goes out of bounds. Rants in quickly. Here's Cochin, so just a little bit of a tease from Cyril there. Just the five disposals, though, this afternoon. Hold there. Hold there, Sean, pressure, as Lee said, but hasn't done a lot Stay with the footy. Here's Greg. Hawks lead, still nine points. But as we spoke about Dustin Martin, he's up to 20 touches. We know Sam Mitchell's had a lot of the footy as well for the Hawks, but Martin's really the one keeping the Tigers Thanks, in this game. The 10 contested possessions, 12 uncontested. They really need to shut him down to be able to get a break on the Tigers. Grimes down in the McBean direction again. He had a couple to beat Smith. Virtual played it well. They've got the numbers every time. Gibson back to Mitchell again. Disposal number 19. Peels one back. Frawley. Hodge. What great players they have across half back to set things up. Playing a distribution role much better than that. Segler's kick not great for Frawley. So Frawley outnumbered Miles. Just needs to scoop it up. Got it to Rebol. Martin left it behind. Time to recover. Goes back inside, oh. and they nearly messed it up. They have Ellis and Cochin. Well done, Burgoyne. Ellis came back, knew he'd made the mistake. Short, fired it across. Oh. Ball still alive. Now in all sorts of trouble. Griggs handball to Miles. Thank you. And there. Lucky to get away with this ball up. Under two minutes to half time. Comedy of errors. Lewis to half forward, lost out. Despite all of that, they're still in this game, the Tigers. Lost out over the head of Rioli, almost got his fingertips to it. White cross, Rioli, quick back on the footy. Over the shoulder though, nobody there apart from Smith of Hawthorne. Comes out wide to Gunston, always presenting. And he'll go back to Gibson. Minute 25 remaining at playing time to half time. While this is going on, Griffiths looks like he's virtually playing uh, spare defender, but I think he might just be the ruckman and uh, said is drifting into that part of the ground as well. Virgil got it from Crawley. This is Lewis. 
Good check. Wide cross. Opens up the defence now. Burgoyne lobs it long down towards full forward. Cecily steps back and forward and takes the mark uncontested. That was clever. The man was watching him coming back. And Cecily sold him something. Been pretty good in their back 50. Admittedly, Hawthorne have missed the being inaccurate. That's, that's a fact. But the, uh, they've been pretty solid in not allowing Hawthorne really easy easy shots at goal. They've had a half a dozen of these set shots of which they have not been very accurate so far. He's got one. This is an important kick and he misses it. In the context of the game, had he kicked that, it would have been a 15-point lead by a scoring affair. As it is, it's 10 points. 2-6 to 1-2, Lee, in this turn. They have got the disease. amazing when all of a sudden, even Hawthorne, who are usually pretty accurate, when all of a sudden a teammate misses, then another teammate it misses, that puts so much pressure on the next kicker. Hampson missed the ball in the air and just rolls out the back to Gibson. Now Duray, now Frawley. So this is a familiar pattern, isn't it? Time and time again, just setting it up through four or five sets of hands. Birchall eventually forward to Mitchell. Now Hill at the back and beaten by the siren. So Hawthorne's lead, 10 points. At half time, Sam Mitchell getting a lot of the ball. 20 disposals for Sam Mitchell and Dustin Martin with 21. So, high possession game from the key midfielders. Yeah, high possession. Uh, well, the inside 50 is a 29 Hawthorne, 17 Richmond, which is about normal. Uh, normal for Hawthorne, very low for Richmond, only 17 and a half for football. So, uh, certainly Hawthorne about all the field position, but uh, inaccuracy has kept this game tight. Yeah, they're scoring at 15%, 15 scoring shots from 29 inside yeah. 50. So that's about on par, but we just like to kick more. To, to play a couple home finals by finishing in the top two, and they'll be tough to beat. Any of the interstate teams you would think would need a home final to start off with to make it through to the grand final here at the G. That's perfect if they get this two-game break. They can orchestrate their run home to their heart's desire. But first things first, they need to win this game. Segler knocks it down. Second half starts as a lot of the first half went. Martin had the ball well, momentarily. Greg got it from Cochin. He was upended. Grimes, feeling ambitious, came to Rioli. What a particularly good kick, and that's a clever mark. No easy ball to mark there. Rance going back and controlled it in one grab. Here's Asbury off his step. Mark off just outside the defensive 50. Scores will level at quarter time. Hawthorne started very well, but Richmond with their teeth, came back. Kick up towards the wing. Knocked down by Segler, and the ball goes out of bounds. Oh, just, they needed to go back inside and out to the far side where they had the extra number, Richmond, but you, you've got to have the courage to do it. There's a lot of courage to it. Click the ball around inside that uh, that back 50, and I think Markoff didn't quite have the confidence to do it. Hampson did well there, but Gunston did better. He knew where the footy was heading. Got his boot onto it quickly. Grimes, good tackle on Hill. That's holding the ball. Richmond, opportunity. Grimes wanted to go to Martin, as have most of the Tigers all afternoon, and Dusty was sending him in the other direction. Ellis, back to Grimes again. So for the time being, just stuck across half-back. They've made some errors that have gifted goals to the Hawks. This might be one of the mark of onto the Floston kick. He did really well to turn around because had he kept moving, he was going to run into a wall of Hawks. Floston eventually gets it from Rance. Short one, hard one. Well done, though, by Castagna. Good tackle behind O'Brien. Honker over the footy. Will come. You just see in the back half, one, perpetu one mistake perpetuates another. The, the first missed kick puts the next player under pressure, and from there it was just a scramble for Richmond to try and get it out. Segler with the run, Hampson with the positioning, knocks it down. Stolen by Hill, hurried kick, Sicily comes to it and takes the mark about 60 metres out. Just lobs it back to Hill, and Hill is now inside the forward 50. Matt Hill has been lively this afternoon. The darting eyes. He's ran hard today. Not for a heap of Keep rewards. Hasn't got a heap of the ball, but he has made himself available for his hard running for that whole first half. This would be a nice reward. Well, he starts it a long way right behind, just sneaking in. So the margin out to 11. Alistair not happy, perhaps. 
the line that that ball took off the boot. Conker. Here's Martin. He swings the ball towards the wing and running hard for him is Cochin. He did really well to skip it a run onto that ball. Ellis has been quiet. He's making some space for the captain. And he got himself into a terrible mess there. And in the end, Isaac Smith with just a hand on the ball knocked over the line. So poor use in the end and he didn't appear to have any genuine targets up forward. A little frustrated with the men further afield. The captain letting them know. Hampson. Big wrestle. Conker went to ground. Mitchell. Well done. He fought hard. Got it out. Lewis got it from Hill. Now Birchall. Out in front of Sicily or maybe Whitecross. Whitecross runs onto the ball. Sicily kept going for him. Hill running hard today as he did last week. Long ball back towards full forward. Puopolo, Gunston. Puopolo's free against the skipper. Yeah, Cochin had the Puopolo matchup just for that particular phase of play. <laughs> I think we've seen Puopolo. He was quite happy to run and jump on the pack and Cochin just grappled him a little bit off the ball. It's a part of the ground that defenders generally panic, let alone midfielders that aren't used to playing in defence down there. So you put the ball in a dangerous area and, and good things tend to happen for the attacking team. So gifted in a slightly different way if it's a goal, but that's three now that they've got for virtually nothing. The Hawks move further ahead. 17 points the lead, so a couple of bad skill errors and then that one against... The captain, three goals virtually gifted directly in front. And as Nick Revolt said, that's been the difference in the game, 17 points. One of the things when uh, Richmond have done OK against Hawthorne over the last few years, they tend to try and play this, just keep maintain possession, kick the ball wide, uh, almost prevent turnovers, but ultimately the turnovers cost them still. Well, Hawthorne have been able to play the keepings off game far better than Richmond today. They've taken double the amount of uncontested marks and on track for 150, which will be a huge number come the end of the game. So Richmond need to do something about that. Margin 17 points. Bergwijn, was he taken high? Apparently not. Was Mitchell strongly. Back towards half back. Brand. Wide cross. Hustling across. Goes down the line. Segler. Gets free a lot, Segler. From one half forward, kicks inside the forward 50. McAvoy almost didn't quite stick. Bruce slaps it out of there. Smith went to ground. Lewis over his shoulder. Bounces on its point, taken by Short. Surrounded, kicks it up towards the wing. Well done, Brand. That's a good the second time. Could have taken it, thumped it away. Rioli got it. Grigg goes out wide. Mark is taken by Griffiths. Thanks, Griffiths on the wing there. Tigers need a goal now. This game has suddenly changed. Griffiths told to go. No inclination to go forward. Comes back to Rance. And Rance at left half back. Only one man comes out in. Short. Eventually does as well. Marks on the defensive end of the centre square. Short, normally a good kick, but that doesn't test him. He comes back to Grimes. So the next one might be testing Dan Grimes. Nothing obvious to go to. He held it a while and then just cleverly into the space in front of Ellis. The Tigers got to start working harder ahead of the ball. Lloyd, Edwards, Drummond, Rewalt, Griffith, Rioli. All six touches are under for the game so far. Just not presenting enough. Ellis down the line. Gibson at the back. Revolt in front. Ricochet off Lewis to Gibson to Jeray. He won't get out of there. They actually work the switch OK then, Richmond, but once that, that first wave of players breaking to the space is covered, that's that's what Walsh is talking about. The forwards need to come up and provide that next option. Martin having a breather at the moment. 23 disposals. Sam Mitchell with 22 miles is caught by a couple of Hawks, and again, the umpire will restart things. I think Hawthorne actually covering that opposite side of the field switch of play. They know Richmond want to go there, so they're just getting players out there to make it difficult to, uh, to play on rather than kick, kick, kick to each other. Hampson did well, but they can't break away. Taken down his mark off. Good strong tackle from Lewis. 17 points. That was Greg. It's clever. The ball came from Burgoyne to Hill. Back to Burgoyne from Lewis. 
Pit forward by Duray. Here's Hill finding plenty of it this afternoon. Good to see. Confidence is rising. Gibson wide to Gunston. We've seen that before deliberately. So Hi, deliberate. Guys. Putting it on the boot. Bruce. Not so good. Kicks into the man on the mark. Grimes controlled it pretty well. Jack is back in defence. Rebolt, David of Edwards. Up on his toes, eventually found Cotchen. Cotchen on the wing then. Sends it inside the forward 50. Griffiths should mark it. He does. Rand in an awkward situation, but it was always going to be the bigger man. With a quick rebound from half back. Hawthorne with the one with pushing forward when Richmond turned the ball over. And we got back more central towards the centre corridor. Uh, Griffith yep, got the sit. There's no closer than here, guys. Thank you. Normally a good kick over distance. This one, though, just swinging away. Missing to the near side. That seems their best opportunity, though, Richmond. They only look like scoring when they get up and create turnover and then explode over back on. onto the ball. I think their, their slow play, their slow build-up, they been? just haven't been able to penetrate Go Hawthorne's defence. Number 23 for Sam Mitchell in game 300. Holds it a while and then long ball, Puopolo, Sicily, Asprey. Well done, Bruce. McAvoy, handball didn't quite connect, so Miles was able to get in there. Now short, Martin again. Quick ball in, Griffiths in front. Clean ball at the back, Lloyd. Slipping over Rioli. Duray, well done. Gibson, back to Brand. Clearing kick is on, and they might be away here. Whitecross needs the ball to sit. Chases it down, close to the boundary line. Bruce is the long option. He's all on his own. And now O'Brien, if he looks up ahead, gives it to Hill. He spotted O'Brien. Flostam did well. Got in front. Couldn't complete the mark. Then the tackle from Flostam on O'Brien. Back on that three forwards, then against one Richmond defender, but Blossom was able to uh, to beat them all. Lost it, told the play on, kicks it out wide, short. It's one thing to be the long option, but it depends on the kicker having the long option with his kick bag. It is White, White Cross had it. That was a powerful kick. Now short, drives it long. Off the hand of Gibson. Oh. Don't see that too often. Mitchell put down and strongly. Over the football was Edwards. Charging in there is Stratton. Left it behind. Oh, clever by Martin. Got it across to Miles. Miles hooks it down towards full forward. Lloyd in front. Stayed on his feet. Goes on to lay a tackle. Frawley did okay. Putting back is Jurey. They hold their poise now. Smith runs to the pocket. Comes outside the 50. Puopolo on the stretch. We come back towards the corridor. He's thinking about it. Well, he hand passes instead. A lot of forwards are deep, as you can see. Gunston, a chaos ball. Goes beyond Rance. Getting across his white cross. Oh, well played, Rance. Sicily was on for the hand pass, and they would have been storming inside 50. Sicily was unattended. Such a good defender, and read that so well. He was like a, a goalkeeper in indoor soccer den. The reactions had to be quick, and they were. Knocked it over the line. Brand was near that ball. Conquer, though, got the ball out. So now they run through Hunt. Long ball down towards Lloyd. Not paid the mark. Jeray mops up. Brand with the footy. Got it from Lewis. Kick not good. Forward from Birchall. Coming the other way. Drummond into the pocket. And now McBean. A little lucky this time, but there's been some bad luck at the other end. And they really have needed the next goal. They've got a big chance here to get it. No, they certainly have. They were able to turn the ball over in the middle of the ground. The Hawthorne uh, turned it over. Missed the target coming from outside in towards the centre corridor. But Richmond then, as soon as they created a turnover forward in centre square, well, then their forwards can get into space really quick. So Liam McBean... He's kicked just a behind today. Kicked the last two goals of the game, the Hawks. Oh, that is a disease. They've all got it, Nick. Both sides have got the goal, the set shot disease to know that today they uh, they just keep butchering the footy. That last kick at goal. It's not like golf, is it? You can't change your putter. Ball comes short. Here's Frawley. Goes along the line. Not that that works. Stay no behind, Isaac, stay behind. Man trying to consolidate his place in the team. 
No one's standing the mark, so he trots up to the defensive 50. Kicks to the wing of it. Terrific mark. He's a wonderful player. The armored dais of defenders. Rance. Forward of the wing. This comes back to Asprey. I think Nick made the point about running at Hawthorne. Probably is their best chance. Grimes comes out wide. Griffiths. Hawthorne very adept at getting across in numbers. And Birchall this time able to break it up. Burgoyne finessing under pressure. Hunt gives a hand pass to Greg. Feeds it forward. Rioli comes back to Miles. Well done. Kept his head. Heavy traffic around him. And Revolt's got the ball. And Jack Nail, it's a difficult shot, but at least it's a kind of angle and the distance, so he's going to kick it inside anyway. Back to Greg. Look, it's almost hey, better when uh, when sides have been missing these set shots. Have a shot from the 40, 40 metre range where low expectations. Yeah, where well, you're uh, hoping I can kick it, but no one expects that I'm going to. Well, I expect he should go close. He's a left footer, so if he arcs around, it should come back nicely for him. The evidence of today, no good thing. Short Greg then. He started at left, it is working back, hasn't got the carry anyway. And Segler, who's been pretty good again today, gets back and concedes a behind. Saw it hold up in the breeze there. Well, she what is the wind condition like down there? Yeah, it's probably going down towards the left of those goals, but nothing significant. Just uh, just some poor kicking today for the boys, I think. Well, Jure short to Birchall, who's built the mark, so they're in here, the Tigers conquer. Back to Grigg. Held the ball a long time. Got away from the hill tackle. Gibson to mop up. Jeray, another opportunity. Well, again, a bouncing ball out for Lewis. Short was hard at it. Gibson, Lewis, kick the ball sideways. How's the umpire going to view this one? Deliver it. That's it. Well, Birchall, that was incorrect disposal, wasn't it? It should have been a set shot at goal, I would have thought, for the Tigers. He fumbled, and then he was tackled and didn't connect the ball. Tried to. Ball is out of bounds. Rawley comes over the top. So they're pressing now, the Tigers. They're doing as they did early in the game in the first quarter. Slow start to the term and then really knuckle down. But they need to translate that into goals. Tossed in. Who's holding who? Segler knocks it down. Miles stole it. He was tackled. Off the ground there by Stratton. Picked up and well played by Drummond. Griffiths in trouble. Castagna got a hand pass away. Good enough for Short. Short's kick. Not so flat. <coughs> He's had it quite a bit today, Short. 14 disposals. That's not his best one, but normally, as we've said, a very reliable kick. Jure to Hill to Rioli, but Cochin got up in front of him. And will hold the Hawks up on half forward for the Tigers for the moment. Greg's the target. Oh, Mitchell, brilliant. Got back, worked hard, affected the mark. Handball from Hill. Lewis, Jure down the line. It's coming back again. Asprey's mark. Rance will need to go here. All his brilliance required. Let it OK and again. But numbers did him in. Burgoyne, Buopolo, Mitchell. Lewis through midfield, Buopolo released into space, kicks a tumbling ball, down towards the 50, coming up is Sicily, sweeping hand pass to Gunston, Gunston goes goalward, and he misses to the right hand side. It's hard to believe the kicking has been this inaccurate, Hunt marks, thought about drifting forward. Three behinds, one, two. It can be quite swirly here, obviously, Nick. We know that at times. Yeah, I must say, I reckon the, the breezes have almost no effect on that part of it. It's just, oh. it's just it's the disease that happens in games. Usually hand. one side gets it where one player misses and the pressure that's created. I mean, that was a sitter for, uh, for Gunston, but he just tried to steer it just that little bit more than he not normally would. Tried to give him an out, Dan Lee, not buying it. <laughs> I'm not buying it. Never does. Quick ball inside 50, fisted forward, so it's still alive here. Greg, Conker, back into trouble, but he got away from Whitecross. Great strength. Martin also runs back into the traffic. Here's Hunt, looping handball. 
Grigg, he's got busy in this third term. Martin's been busy for the duration. 27 disposals now. Ball set up. White Cross knocked it away from Edwards. Fighting after it. Hampson away from White Cross. Just handball, not clean to Miles. Rioli maybe in here. That's a hard footy. Rioli going one way, the other. Markov. And a ball up, not a bad result. It's just both sides, really. Neither side this quarter has been clean with their ability and with their ability to break away from stoppage with clean handballs and pinpoint by foot. So the team that starts to use the footy a bit more efficiently is the one that's going to kick away. Well done, Rioli. Stripped out of the footy. Hunt went again, though, and gave it to Hanson. No knock the ball out of his head. No Hanson tackle. enjoying perhaps his most productive head. year of the ball. Yeah, he's been good, Hampson. 22 hitouts, 10 of those to advantage. So he certainly kept him in the game in the clearance area. Mitchell to Lewis drives it inside the forward 50. Going back, Grimes knocked it down in front. Asprey crumbles, lifts a hand pass away to Markov. Markov across to Ellis. Brandon Ellis runs the ground out towards left half back. Not a particularly good kick. Birchall comes up. Didn't proceed because he's a natural right footer. I mean, left footer. Would have been forced to kick with his right there. Short. And Gunston, OK. Recalibrate. See what Gunston can do from here. His eyes suggest he's looking for something in the middle. It's going to take a big kick from here. The, the breeze that is out there is probably going straight into his face across the ground. So he's going to have to give it everything to, uh, to get it into that breeze in that pocket. He's a real star, Gunston. To the 50. Powerful kick. Misses to the near side. Nick, how difficult is that when you're sort of anxious to short pass and then you've got no options? You bail out on that and you've got to sort of go through it again and kick a goal. I think in a, a situation like that, it, it's not too bad because you're so far out and you're so wide that the expectation is, OK, there's, there's not much on. I'm, I'm, I'm entitled to go and have a shot and there's not much expectation on kicking it. It's more... I think when the, 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 uh, the disease has gone through the team and everyone's anxious about having shots, that, that, that can really... Uh, playing a player's mind, I know I've felt it at various stages throughout my career that the weight of expectation and kicking a goal that you should kick. Lucky to get away with that one then. The ball just didn't sit for Isaac Smith. Shorts kick out wasn't a good one. White Cross, who's really getting into the tempo of this game now, finding his feet again, and it's terrific to see. Particularly, you look up at the scoreboard and you feel like you're dominating a game and you kick five goals, 14, it starts to play on everyone's mind. So Segler knocks the ball backwards. Zach Smith, argumentative, talkative, as he genuinely is, and somewhat reluctantly gives the ball back to the umpire. Another restart. So just a little stalemate here. Edwards, Miles, looks upfield. McBean will have to go here. He goes in front, good hands, couldn't quite hang on. Revolt took a high knock, goes down, slow to get up. Grigg, meanwhile, Wraps the footy up and keeps it in that area. Gee, cousin doesn't look too good there. Yeah. He'll be right. Stay back here. Brothers talk to each other that way. Cousins do as well, it seems, Dan. Yes. I think he's being facetious. <laughs> Thinking it got him in the right spot. Go ahead. Oh. Ball is taken by Frawley. Frawley goes back to centre half back. Aggressive running from Stratton, then he slips. Eventually worked out for them. Now Hill kicks inside the forward 50. Over the top, Gunston knocked it away. Grimes onto the crumb, though. Well, not a good hand pass. Markov in the air was a sitting duck. Pushed across the line. Boundary throw in. So the margin out to 16. Such an important game for the Hawks. They can't afford to drop this one. They'll still be on top. There's the kick down towards the forward pocket. Going back is Rance. It's a behind. I mean, Richmond don't really look like scoring. The margin is, what, 17 points now. So, I guess the way the game's been going, that's a fairly comfortable margin. But uh, for Hawthorne, it's still gettable territory if, if Richmond just can have a, a good five or ten minute patch. Uh, six inside 50s, the Hawks way. They just haven't been able to get the ball beyond... Halfway the Tigers. Here's Hunt. Again, just slow and deliberate down the line. Hampson fighting with Segler. Well done, Lloyd. Came up, attacked the footy. 
Roberts back towards half forward. McBean, this has often been the case, he's had two flying against him. Frawley was one of them. McBean lays a good tackle. Hodge got the ball away to Birchall, then to Lewis. The old one, two. Gunston involved. Now Jure looks up. At the back, Sicily didn't really get a fight. Gunston there as well. Couldn't quite get there in time. And Rance in front, such a good defender, does what he needs to do. Kick out, not great from Grimes. Still alive for Hawthorne. Well played by Smith, knocked it down. Some indecision between he and Hill. And he comes back to the middle of Gunston. Now Gunston, I think, has been told to have a shot this time. And on the mark is about 40 metres out from goal. We well, back him nine times out of ten normally on about today because... Uh, it's not working, but normally he's such an accurate shot at goal, well within kicking gone. distance. Gee, it was a dangerous kick across goal. You, you can see they're really deliberate now about going for that switch, but at times you, you can't bite off too much. Richmond did on that occasion. Goal here. Hawks will lead by 23 points in a low-scoring game. And this one is good. Nice, solid kick. He's been outstanding, really, on the forward line in presentation. He's got his second goal now. Talked before about he's so adept at getting back in defence as well. He really is an all-round player. And the importance underscored because of the absence of Jared Roughhead. And we wish him well. Hope everything's going OK. Makes you think how lethal it was before. He's got that unusual grip of the ball, doesn't he, Lee? That, that more perpendicular ball drop that gives him the beautiful spin on the ball, which means it generally goes pretty straight if he hits it flush. So last three goals of the game now to the Hawks, and the Tigers in a spot of bother. 23 points is the lead. Birchall, he's been so good off half-back. Got the ball from Mitchell. Long one again down to McAvoy. Rioli roving perfectly. And there's four in a row for the Hawks. Amazing how often there's a goal drought and no one can score a goal, and finally you break it. Next set of bounds, bang! I mean, it's great work by McAvoy just to push his body into branch to make sure the ball came came down to the front and centre, and Rioli crossed the pack onto his dominant side. Let's have a look at Rioli. You see. Him just the broken step, just picks it, picks the fall of the ball. It's not an easy thing, that crummy position, because the, he just read it off the hands beautifully. So the margin suddenly gets down to 29 points. Almost looked deliberate, the yeah, arm down yeah. for McAvoy, didn't it? That's the value of, of everyone being on the same page. The kick down into a predictable spot, McAvoy providing a great contest, and Rioli knowing where he needed to be. McAvoy, good all day, conquer, surrounded, taken down. Grimes has been pretty good on Rioli too. Bit of a Mitch mass match in size there. You see, just smart. Sits to the front of the pack here. Grimes goes yeah. to the back, and he only needs a little bit of space, Cyril, to make it damaging. Segler knocks wide. Conker, Drummond, Hunt does okay. Fancy stepping, a high one down towards half forward. Stratton came strongly, knocked it directly to Grigg. Grigg goes in short. Well done by Brand, worked his way in front. Slipping over Lewis, kept his composure, or did he? He didn't get the ball out anyway. Tried to give it to Burgoyne, stayed in, ball up. So in the blink of an eye, it's 29 points. It was 10 points at half time, 29 points now. In the Tigers have found the going very difficult in this term. Three behinds to three, four. Mitchell, his ball out, trapped by Asprey. High one inside at the back. McBean, well roved by Edwards. Can he straighten up? He put it on the deck instead. And it just rolls through for a behind. Goal needed. Behind only. The five goal margin now, so a reasonably comfortable lead for uh, Hawthorne heading into three quarter time. There he is again, McAvoy. Step fast. Putting on a show for Nick today, Dan. Just reminding him. I think he's pretty happy, boys. <laughs> Nick's been generous with his praise of his former teammate. It's three-quarter time. 
And Hawthorne kicking away in the last five minutes of that third quarter. In a three-quarter time on Sunday football, they lead 7-15-57 to the Tigers 3-11-29. Back with more shortly. Shots, which is reasonable. A couple of those was a rust, but uh, not, but not too many easy shots being uh, generated by the Tigers. Mitchell, 28 possessions. That man there, Dustin Martin, has 27. As we start this final term of the MCG Sunday football, Segler powerfully coming to meet at Bruce. Duopolo with the outside of the boot, and the head of Gunster, Rance, good judgment, hung back. There's Martin, who levels up the score at 28 apiece. Ellis has got the ball at left half back. Ellis, not the player he was a couple of seasons ago. A short mark of. Still, other clubs become aware of him. Good players in general take steps. Markov just kicks it away. And Hodge marks on the wing. Couldn't have picked him out any better, Dan. No. So Hodge, they've been really good at forming that wall, haven't they? And all their experienced players in it. Hodge runs to the logo and then sends a high ball inside 50. Markov involved again. Sicily was in there. Ball. Still in Sicily's hands. He fought hard there. Burgoyne back to Smith. Sedlar got it. Had his name all over it. Kept his eyes on the footy. And in the end, Nick didn't really need to extend them. Took it on the chest. No, well, the third man in, you, you tend to get a free run at it when you're in that situation. So he just needed to time it, which he did. Gunson did a good job to realise that someone else was coming in and just bodied Rance out enough without giving away the free kick. You wonder where a free forward can just float into the third man up and you look around and say, well, here's the Richmond defender, the taller Richmond defender that's trying to take the Segler matchup. But Mark deserves a goal, and he's missed it. Is that something to do with the zoning situation, uh, Nick, that the, the Richmond defence is zoning a bit, so no one player's got responsibility for Segler? No? Yeah, I, th I think so. It would have been incumbent upon a Richmond player to come off and, and, and make sure they picked him up. I mean, we had occasions last week against Melbourne where Joey Montagna, our smallest player, ended up on Max Gorn. So I think that's just the nature now of the game and, and the way that defences have evolved to try and zone space rather than plant opponents. Hampson knocks it down. Bruce, well done by Cotchin. Saw it coming. Out wide. Lloyd gets an obliging bounce. Runs away, looks inside the forward 50. Gibson coming across in coverage. Got high, didn't take the mark. Kept coming, though. Takes Griffiths down and will get the ball up. Be quite happy, Hawthorne, for Richmond to put one of their fours to push up and become an extra right midfielder out. and keep the spare guy behind the footy. And that's worked pretty well for them. McAvoy brilliantly down to Mitchell. McAvoy and Segler. Very nice combination. Robert Hale retired, and these two guys both flourishing, holding the ball on Rance. Well, that's the last straw. Segler, the tackler now, brought him down. And often Rance makes a mistake. It's up to 15 disposals then to go with his 15 hit outs. It's been a good afternoon. Should have kicked that goal a moment ago. Drives the ball inside 50. Trying to get a run at it. A Sicily at the back. Asprey. Gunston, good tackle. Bruce. O'Brien, now Hill, the ball back towards full forward. It's a dangerous ball, and OK, says the umpire on oh, the What do you think, Dan? You've been studying the rule book this week. The player Schmidt just had a relapse. <laughs> Close enough to the goal line, that's the reason that's fine. Yeah. Isaac Smith, but every Isaac Smith's looking at the umpire to say, oh, well, what was his... Another thing with that, Lee, I yeah. was reading the rule, I read it several times trying to understand it, yeah. and... Uh, one thing that struck me, it didn't say who should get the free kick, because something that came out of that free kick that was played, Schultz kicked the goal. The tackler was Dixon. The OK, the nearest player to the goal line. Well, apparently, there's Bruce. It was left a little open-ended. In all but the respect that the kick was right, as it turned out. But a lot in the past had been wrong. O'Rourke, Cecily, sends it long down towards full forward. Will it bounce through for a goal? It does! James Sicily gets the goal. A 
I'm sure it's a decision the AFL just wished didn't happen. That's it. Yeah, Everything I, seemed to work beautifully. I suspect so. It uh, was a little bit harsh that particular one last week, but certainly every player around the goal line now is uh, holding his breath a little bit, not sure what he can do. But anyway, good goal by Sicily. Bounced in the goal square, really, and uh, haven't been able to get him on the full, but bounced it through. The decision on the rush last week, Dennis, wasn't the confusion. The confusion came with the clarification on the Monday that it was that it was a right decision. So well, I, I read the rule and I think it was, to be honest. If you weren't confused before, you will be now. <laughs> well, the key word was intentionally. Well, you look back over the history of that, I mean... 85%, 90% would have been yeah. intentional. Well, in that, in that case, Howes from the weekend would have been a, an intentionally rushed behind as well. Yeah, yeah, but the benefit of the doubt is to be given to the defensive player, so that opens it up to inter whatever interpretation you want to have. The voice of reason, though. Yeah. Cotchin drives the ball long, almost to Mark Hampson. He's battled away, tried hard, spilt that mark, though, should have done better. The ball is in. Hawthorne hands in there, white cross. So that's the real beauty of our game, though, isn't it? That basically every decision is grey. Yep. And, and that's why the umpire's job is so very, very difficult because it depends how you interpret the rules. McAvoy, Cochin got his kick away from white cross. Good pressure from white cross again. So his return gaining some momentum now, isn't it? He's up to 12 disposals, three tackles. He's kicked the goal as well. He'll be a handy player as they run towards. The deep part of September. Brand up towards the wing. Getting back is short. The pressure came from Lewis. Interesting by short. That was very good. Edwards knocks it across the line. It'll be a boundary throw in. So at quarter time, Richmond were 2 5. Now they're 3 11. And falling off the pace rapidly. McAvoy jostled out of it. Martin hurriedly towards full forward. Oh, terrific! Raybolt just nudged the man in front of him fully. Forward a little bit. He did a good job. He did it with his chest, so if it his hands, it would have been a definite free kick, but he just flew that little bit early, got the chest, ooh, maybe the bit of the shoulder into the back. That was well done. Wasn't it? I, I got a feeling it, yeah, it was just subtle though, wasn't it? Just he's falling under the footy. So the first goal since quarter time. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. That we talk about the grey. You know you're not allowed to push in the back in the marking duel, but it's how hard. If you push very subtly and very slightly, you'd probably do that. But if you push it hard, it's probably going to be a free kick. That's the grey area that we uh, that we uh, the umpires have to interpret. Just the yeah. second goal since quarter time that Hawthorne have conceded. They'll be disappointed offensively, Hawthorne, that they haven't converted more on the scoreboard, but they they can't be disappointed with their defensive performance. It's been outstanding. And again, another game that uh, Delivio's out. Richmond lose. It's pretty much automatic uh, recent years. Martin drives the ball long, trying to get two in a row here and just make it a little interesting. Frawley just out of sorts for the moment, but did OK. Socket the ball forward. Coming hard at it, Markov. Stays in for Edwards, does it? Boundary umpire was right there. Good kick to Martin. He wheels around, goes for home, gets plenty on it, but the accuracy not there. Well, it's not his fault, that's for sure. Dustin Martin has been in and done everything. 22 kicks in his 32 disposals, 13 contested possessions. His first time on the scoreboard, though, that behind. It's a 29-point ball game. Virgil drives it outside the 50. Big pack at the drop, comes behind. O'Brien couldn't get it out of there. Rance cleverly. Miles hadn't stopped trying. Back to Rance. Rance in trouble now. That's holding the footy. Bruce will get the free. Just saw Alistair Clarkson moments ago. Coaching game number 275. Closing in on John Kennedy in 299. 
pass from Hill. Bounces obligingly for Hodge, just stole it. Sends it forward, O'Rourke back to Hill. Kicking towards the Fremantle end. His mum will be pleased. <laughs> Going back down there, it's missed by Vlostone. Tackled by O'Brien. Keeping it alive, Rioli. It's still alive, Rioli. It's a goal. It was like a man walking the high wire, Cyril. He's really fought to get himself back in the game since halftime. He looked down of sorts in the first half, but he hasn't been totally in control in the second half either, but there have been flashes. And those flashes we take from the game. It's nine possessions, two goals, so he's always valuable. Three clearances, five tackles, so he's always in the game. Was this the fear of just knocking it through? I suspect... Uh, Last week, Blossom might have just hit it. So it was just, just conceded the behind from five metres out. Still, the game wants the players to try and keep it in. No doubt about that. Martin keeps it alive for the Tigers. Down inside 50, Revolt was trying to work his way into another free kick position. Didn't get it that time. Lloyd had it a long time. Dangerous bouncing ball around the corner, but a touch on it. Rioli at both ends. Exciting. Okay, Bruce would have loved this. Mm. Oh, no, it's a bit slow for Bruce, I think. <laughs> he wants a little more from Cyril. There goes Virgil. What's Stephen and Grant's mum's name? Stephanie? Stay Stephanie, on, well done. Yes. Looking on. Who knows what the future holds? Oh, that's Mitchell. a nice Good kick. Right cross. The PM found Mitchell. It comes out wide, Frawley, forward of the wing. Burgoyne is cruising past, that spells danger. Just outside the 50, sends it long down towards full forward. Rioli is coming from behind, Puopolo was there. Opportunity for McAvoy, comes across to Gibson, doesn't kick too many goals, but steers this one through. Just his third goal for the year. He doesn't kick a lot, you're right, Dan. And the Hawks, well, <laughs> teammates do know who kicks goals, who doesn't kick goals, and who hasn't ever kicked any goals. And they got around him there. Nice to see. Unashamedly watching the replay. <laughs> Just needs a remote. Have a look at this. This is wide cross to Mitchell. There's about half a dozen disposals after that. But if you can make that kick that he made, it's amazing how often you can go forward and just out, outnumber and outposition the uh, the opposition defence. Especially with the zoning defence. Once you get the ball to the edge of the zone, as, as that kick to Mitchell did, well then the path of resistance to get it deep inside the forward line is not very strong at all. Mitchell up to 31 disposals now. All the goal really game really needs from a Hawthorne point of view. Here's a goal for the milestone man. Markov, good kick. Lloyd, good mark. In front of Gibson, who just kicked the last one. A terrific kick in the revolt direction. Oh, Frawley's right. given away the free kick. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's one of those situations the defender can really only touch the foot if he touches arms or head. Uh, yeah, the, the swinging left arm got across his, uh, across his neck and, and chin. Oh, we've seen worse let go, but technically was there. So just the one this afternoon for Jack so far, and yeah, that's been the story of the kicking today from both teams. Did that ball go over the line? I think it did, and Brand made sure the second time. So hasn't been their day in front of goal, has it? Either side, 4-14 Richmond, 10-17 the Hawks. Virgil to Burgoyne. Burgoyne. Very Mark deliberately to Smith. Play on, play Smith, wide-eyed, was coming on, to our commentary side. Not 15. Well, that's out of the blue. Lewis can't believe it. And with him. But fair enough. Hill, Smith, pushing up the ground. Goes wider still. Jeray, white cross. Showed a lot of poise there. Back to Smith. Smith, a high ball down towards half forward. Bruce in front. Knocked away by Hunt. Out of it, Miles. Knocked down by Burgoyne. In comes Grigg. Strong tackle by Burgoyne. And we'll have a ball up. 
We saw Bradley Hill in that play there. Reports coming here, caught up with Ross Lyon about his future. He's such an important player up and down with form this year. He's 28 disposals, a 10 score involved in 600 metres carried. He's just one of those players that can break the lines, great players in close, but he can get it out and it's damaging when he has it in his hands. Next Welsh, his last couple of weeks particularly have been great. Miles, Ray got there first. Gibson, brilliant. Brand, now Burgoyne. All towards half forward. Bruce worked his way in front. That was interesting. He had a couple of Tigers to beat. He gets up a little sore. The Mooners going stats is always an interesting one when the company's disposals are Nick and I early in the game, about 20 minutes in. Martin had had eight disposals and was minus 14 or something for Mooners goes. In other words, he kicked it backwards or gone backwards with his with his handballs. He's up to 577 metres games now, so that's that's much better. Uh, Pull up. Penetration, I guess, with your disposal. It can be a little bit misleading as well if you're the type of player that just gets it and bangs it on the boot every time. I mean, you, you need to be selective when you're doing that. But, yeah, it seems to be a stat that more and more commentators are going to now when they're talking about efficiency of disposal. Well, every stat almost begets another stat, though, doesn't it? Sometimes you might be kicking it backwards because it's late in the quarter and you've got a lead. Yeah. Yep, yep, absolutely. You know, it's... All they are is a guide, Dennis. They don't oh. tell the pitcher. They only give a guide. It's plenty of them. Mitchell still having a bit to say. And where to now for the Tigers? I mean, you wonder, will they bite the bullet and rebuild? It's not a word they seem to like. Mitchell, tackle from behind. Down he goes. Ball not coming out. Eventually, it came out. Martin picked it up there. Over the top. Lloyd looks down towards half forward. Revolt had it punched away. Controlled again by Smith. Having a good final term comes back to Gibson to Frawley. This ball up towards the wing. Gunston got hands to it. Lewis cruising past. Virgil, Hill. Back to Lewis. Nobody near it. Walks forward, stops. Back to Virgil. Virgil comes to half forward and Gunston presenting again. Realistically, I suppose. Richmond's future is probably in year eight right now. They don't seem to realise it, though. The thing with the rebuilding, Dennis, when people think, oh, that means we'll let go one or two of our better players to try and draft, but, geez, you've got to draft well if you're going to go to that policy. Cyril! Get Bruce on the phone. That was better. The ball was going to go over his head. He's just got fantastic leg power to ability just to jump, jump in the air and... Just play much taller than his height is because of that leg power. It's funny, when he got that hand to it, most players, you would think, if we're watching it as we do, they wouldn't get that second grab, but with him you felt it was assured, didn't you? Such good balance. Yeah, remarkable. Gets the goal. It's a route now. Eleven seventeen plays, 4-14 with about eight and a half minutes to go in this one. And Rioli, the jewel in the crown, is coming off and we may not see him again this afternoon. Sits down with three goals, Dan. So just seven kicks and three goals. That's the sort of efficiency you want. See Cyril Rioli's third goal for the game, second for this quarter. Dylan Grimes actually played on him for the first three quarters and did a really good job. We know Dylan's been riddled with injuries throughout his career. He hasn't come on this quarter so far, so looks like there's some more concerns, unfortunately, for Dylan Grimes. Ball ends up with Hampson. He sends a very high ball inside 50. Frawley, again, this time on Cochin pushing off, a little unsure of himself what he can and maybe cannot get away with. Brand got it from Isaac Smith. A good mark by Floston. So, round seven, it was Hawthorne by 46 points. And with eight minutes to play, it's Hawthorne by 45 points in round 18. It looked like being remarkably similar results. Stratton, Gibson, Lewis, Gunston, Hill, Mitchell. This will bring the crowd to their feet. Jurey, they want Mitchell to keep going. Might not be his chance here. Shot on goal. Is home. There we go. 
O'Rourke with a beautiful finish. Sammy Mitchell involved in the passage of play. I think the crowd wanted him to keep going. It was a fantastic link up, wasn't it, from half back? They came straight pretty much down through the through the centre corridor. So once they maintained possession and got the ball to the runner, they walk over the 50 metre line, but it took about half a dozen precise handballs to get there. Well, a good man knows his limitations. The crowd went up in anticipation with Sammy Mitchell streaming forward, but he did what he's done so often in his career, set up another teammate with one of those lightning handballs. And Hawthorne really kicking away now. I think the entire crowd were watching Mitchell. <laughs> Hoped he'd run on and get the hand pass back. They couldn't care less about O'Rourke. <laughs> All comes down towards the 50. That's not true. O'Rourke trying to cement his place in the team from the Giants. He's he said it in the pregame, Sammy Mitchell, though. He'll just focus on doing doing well what he does well. He, he knows his limitations. It's amazing he hasn't Straight kicked a goal. Here. At all this year, you would have thought he would have got somewhere inside 50 at least once in the what 16 games he's been played. Martin, Brig, Miles, Hunt. Down towards full forward, that's holding on. McBean had it thumped away by the man behind Stratton, falls to Burgoyne. Clever, strength with Burgoyne, often underestimated. Mitchell kicks it outside the 50. Well played by Hunt, coming through Puopolo. Could have been taken high. So, just disposal number 13 for Puapolo. Hasn't been his busiest afternoon, but they've all played their role, the Hawks. And that's what they've been doing for the better part of, well, certainly four years and longer than that, stretching back to 2008. Here's Mitchell again. This time he got it from O'Rourke. Down to Cyril. Cyril had to control it at his feet. Swatted it across, trying to get it to Hill. Castagna oh. bursting out. Here's Rioli again. Bruce, the beneficiary, gets through the Seagulls and kicks a goal. Uh, Rioli's eyes lit up. Uh, Mitchell's coming through the centre of the ground. He's alone, 40 metres out. But one of the rare occasions where the Mitchell kick went to ground. But... The second effort created the goal anyway. He looked like a bloke that was sniffing his fourth goal. Absolutely, goal, really. yeah. <laughs> That's two for Bruce now. Sicily and Gunston with a couple each as well. Cyril with three. Yeah, that's the kick. Went to uh, went to Rioli's feet. He was just, uh, yep, mark it. Kick me fourth goal. I think that was in his mind. But, in, but he, uh, as he always does, the second effort, he didn't feel sorry for himself. He... He bounced up, helped create the turnover back. I said he might be back. Well, he's back. <laughs> Edwards, Miles, Frawley from behind, didn't put the arms up. Gibson, what a player he's been. Got it back to Frawley. Burgoyne had a good afternoon. Brand, some hesitation. Under pressure, the kick falls in short. And Markov looking back inside the forward 50, pumps it in once more. Here comes Segler. Got a fist on it. Pulled it straight up in the air, though. McBean tried to turn around in there. He's got a frame not made for that. They know he's there. They've got a ball up about 15 metres out. Nearly 52,000 here today. A lot of them to see Sam Mitchell, the 76th player to reach 300 games. The 77th will join... The illustrious 3-0-0 club next week, Jimmy Bartell. A cluster of milestones. Remarkable, really, how so many big milestones are coming at the one time. It's a golden period for those with longevity. It's exciting to watch them tick past those magical numbers. Miles in there. No room to move in. In a little push and shove, Miles will give the ball back to the ump. 57 points. It could really blow out here with still five and a half to play. Segler, Hampson. Hampson did well. A boot to ball onto the chest of Gibson. White cross in the back pocket. As wide as still and Hill. He's marked the left half back. In pre-game, if you take the 50-point margin every day of the week, but it's just taken Hawthorne a long time to 
to really drop Richmond off on the, on the scoreboard. I think I'm right, Lee, when I say that Hawthorne has a very select Hall of Fame. It's not really that, but the numbers are pretty low, aren't they? The, the actual Hall of Fame itself. Yeah, at Hawthorne. Um, Sorry, questions without notice. I don't know the the question. Last time I looked, it was it was a lot smaller than most. It wasn't a team as such. I'm trying to think how how long ago they formed the Hall of Fame, uh, Dennis. That's why there might not be an enormous amount of numbers yet. Right, it might have only been seven or eight years ago. Or... I can recall. Sorry about There'll that. There'll be a few coming in from this squad, though. I'll say. I'll say. Be, absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. Some um, great names of the past that surprised me weren't there. There's Mitchell. He'd be a certain deal with that. Four times best and fairest, and every chance to win a fifth. Mind you, we're blase to that Basil and I because Lee, eight, and I think down the other end is six. Not bad, 14. <laughs> yeah. Handy desk to share. Here's Lewis. Long ball down towards Sicily. It was from behind. Gee, that was brilliantly done by Puopolo. Kept it moving their way. Floston sensed that and got in the road. Here's Markov with a little challenge in front of him. Gives the ball across to Brandon Ellis, who runs to defensive 50. Good chase. O'Brien got him, and then he got away. Crawley in front. Griffiths behind. Stratton came down. Here's Rioli at the other end. Cochin runs to the 50, goes short to the pocket, and Revolt's got it. Can play on quickly, opens up the angle, and kicks his second goal. One of the few times Richmond have been able to break through the middle of the ground and just get the overlap into their uh, into their forward 50. The Hawthorne defences has normally been outnumbering all, all that hold back half. So Rewald hasn't got a whole lot of chances today. They even outnumbered here on the wing when Stratton came across and one of the few times they've really failed to affect the spoil properly and Rioli stayed on the ground and he was a player that got her inside 50. Rewald uh, play on, open up the angle. It's not a difficult kick for a, a skilled goal kicker. 95 to 44 then. Closing moments of the game. Martin still working strongly. It was interesting. Mitchell thought he had him, but Martin's very strong. Gets it again. There's Greg. Down towards half forward. McBean keeps it in front. Well trapped there by O'Brien. And well released to be waited on the man coming up. That was Gibson. Ran, get the cross, and now they work it forward. O'Rourke gave it to Sicily. This is Burgoyne. 60 metres out, Burgoyne. Doubling back down there is Piwapolo, surrounded by Tall Timber, taken high Gunston. Yeah, played it well. He sends the tackle coming, just dropped the bottle right, right fractionally, lift the arm. And, I mean, I, some people hate that. I, I just think it's testing the tackler. So. For me, I'm happy for the player who has got the ball to be hard to tackle. So tech, test the tackling technique to make sure that the tackler doesn't go too high and therefore slip up a few inches and get a high tackle. But many in the footy world think opposite. I'm yeah, with you. There goes the kick from Gunston. He puts it through. They're over the 100. Didn't see this coming at half time. 14 17, 5 14. So they're getting good percentage now. But I'm not sure it will come down to that because this will give them a two game buffer at the top of the table. Interesting there we see Mitchell and Martin. What do you think? Uh, Nick, who do you think's been the best of that pair? Oh, I think Mitchell's had the 10 score involvements as opposed to what was it, Martin's uh, a couple. So, yeah, I think he's been the more effective player. Mar Martin clearly has been Richmond's best midfielder, but I think that by, by sheer fact that Hawthorne are winning the game and winning comfortably, you'd have to give the knock to Mitchell. Gunston to Sicily. Now the Hawks right on top. Well, maybe percentage is on their minds. They made the point, didn't they, earlier in the year that they were behind on that score 
Brighton clearly two games clear. That's going to be a wonderful Philip. They'll win this game. They'll move ahead. And they now are in a very luxurious position. They can manage their way through the end of the season and get ready to go again for four. Yes, one of the things about managing your way through the season, everyone having the a week off before the final series. Please, you probably don't have to manage it. That, that is the management week. Yeah. It's taken care of for them. That's right. <laughs> Martin off the ground hasn't stopped trying. So holding the opposition to just 5 14. A win like this is a good kick for the percentage. There's a walk on the other side. Channels it back. Smith, White Cross. This will be a handy player in the finals despite that hand pass. A walk. Again, drives it inside the forward 50. Oh, Segler, shielded by Sicily, takes the bar. I don't know whether they've been literally doing it, but if, you, if the Hawthorne forwards can just make sure Rance can't get access to the footy, yeah. I don't know whether the uh, the second, third Richmond defender is going to stop stop that. The second and third marking forward from most oppositions, let alone the Hawthorne big guys. Man on the mark is about 30 metres out, directly in front. If Segler were a stock and on the Dow Jones, I think he's a buy. Oh no, maybe. Oh, it's a hole. Oh. <laughs> he has been a great pickup coming across from Collingwood a few years ago because he can play in the ruck, but he's also a dangerous marking forward. I think that's the value of both of them because McAvoy's also dangerous to marking the ball that deep forward. Interesting rants. Oh, Went on the spiral. Segler. And Segler's got the mark. They missed the goal, got back, took the mark, and the rants, partly in frustration, I think, just banging it on the boot. So interesting. They'll have 14 wins at the end of today. <laughs> Every time he goes near it, they want to manufacture a goal for Mitchell, don't they? I'm not sure that that's the Hawks' style. Lewis has kicked forward, and McAvoy. Chip it into Mitchell. Just stand on your own, Sam, about... 45 metres out. <laughs> well, he's in the sort of position where if they're feeling oh, no, really many. adventurous, they could do it. <laughs> too many people in that part of the ground. But... They really have kept the pressure on the Hawks this game right through to the end. McAvoy's going for seven goals in this last quarter just from turnovers. So shows the professionalism and the drive of this side to really push out games. My kick after the siren here, Welshie. It's been a thumping win for the Hawks. And McAvoy puts a little icing on Sam Mitchell's 300th cake. Game 300 for one of their all-time greats. And the Hawks win by 70 points. Scarlet, a magic moment for a great footballing family. Well, she. 